Tom Reeves. I'm the general counsel for the Water Management District. And I've got a slide presentation. I want to go over a little bit about the Sunshine Law in Florida and how it applies to you all and what we need to do. Sunshine Law is a, is a term that you know people throw around a lot, but it has some, some specifics in it that I think we probably do need to look at. Uh, the first one, the source of the Sunshine Law is the Florida Constitution. Uh, first off, the symbol in the top left is for the First Amendment Foundation. Um, I am uh, blatantly plagiarizing these uh, slides from them. They did a really good presentation, so that's where it's coming from. But uh, anyway, in, under the Florida Constitution, it says all meetings of a collegiate body, executive branch of any state government, county, municipal, special district, etc., cetera, um, will be transacted in public. Collegial body can refer to any board, commission, committee, council, task force, et cetera. All right. Now that's the Constitution, which gives you a kind of a broad uh, brush stroke of what they're trying to do. The statutes give you the specifics. The, under 286.011, the Sunshine Law contains three basic requirements. Meetings of public agencies must be open to the public. Reasonable notice of such meetings must be given. Minutes must be taken. So those are kind of the three basic steps. And of course, there's uh, technical requirements for each. Um, so reasonable notice. Uh, by the element of Sunshine Law of reasonable notice, that just makes good sense. It doesn't matter how public the meeting is, if nobody knows you're having a meeting, if they can't attend. In order for a meeting to be public, reasonable notice of the meeting must be given. And uh, in this case, I don't think you all have to worry about that. Staff is very uh, uh, is very familiar with how to give notice. It'll be available on the website. It'll be available to people who sign up for the email. Uh, public participation. So this is kind of a, a new wrinkle, relatively new, in the last 10 years or so. Originally, the Sunshine Law did not require that the public body allow the public to say anything. But under the Sunshine Law, the, the public body was allowed to simply let the public sit and watch, and that was it. And the Florida uh, courts have approved that. But in 2013, the legislature approved a law called 286.0114, which uh, required that boards and commissions provide the public with a reasonable opportunity to be heard, and that's a, a technical term. It doesn't mean they get to say, to break in while we're having discussions, it doesn't mean any of that, it doesn't mean they have to have the opportunity at every meeting, but it means at some point during this process, the public has to be given a reasonable opportunity to make comments. Now, what we've done here is we've got a uh, uh, we've got set up where they can get written comments anytime that are available. And then during these meetings, we're at least going to have the time today um, and one more uh, before this is done. Um, the the issue with reasonable uh, public comment would be if you're going to set if you uh, start the process and everybody thinks these certain things are at issue and you allow reason and you allow public comment and then you go down the path and those issues completely change you probably need to reopen it and allow public comment and so that's why the thought was well we're at least going to give a comment at the start and the finish that way you know it's very um, we're allowed to have reasonable rules we're allowed to remove speakers that become disruptive um, now anything and this is kind of an important one uh, that goes beyond this these, uh, these meetings, when we have these meetings, whether they're online or they're here, they are true public meetings. Anyone is allowed to have a camera, anyone is allowed to have a recorder. Um, it used to be a bigger deal as far as the camera and the recorder couldn't be disrupted because cameras were very big and you had to set them up and all of this sort of stuff. Today, most of the time when someone records it, they pull their phone out, they just sit in their chair and record it. That's totally proper. But uh, you all need to know that because if you, if you don't want something on the front page of the paper, don't say it in here. It could very easily be reported, all of that. Uh, voting. So with a, with a Sunshine Board, uh, you have to, each of the members has to vote. Those votes have to be recorded. Those votes have to be recorded by the person. So um, they'll be, uh, ultimately, the ultimate product here will be a peer review report, and you all will have to vote on that peer review report. Um, you, there's not necessarily a voting requirement prior to that, as you guys are kind of 
um, discussing it, and hey, what about this and what about that, and, you know, those types of things. But ultimately, there'll have to be a report um, that's voted on. That's voted on. Uh, it cannot be by secret ballot. It has to be a vote attributable in the minutes to each one of you by name, which is the way all sunshine. Um, minutes have to be kept. Uh, minutes are not necessarily a recording, but we do record these meetings. You're not required to them, but we do record them. The recordings are public records. The minutes uh, just say what was what had happened. With these types of meetings, again, the ultimate thing that will be produced is a is a peer review report, and so there's probably only going to be one set of minutes that say the vote was blank, and that would be the end. Other than that, I would assume they're going to say things like discussion was had, these folks made presentations, you know, those types of things. Um, now, the Sunshine Law says that all meetings have to be public. What the courts have said is that any meeting of, the, of two members of a Sunshine Board is considered a public meeting and it has to be noticed and has to be minutes taken and open to the public and all of that. But it says that specifically now, it's a meeting at which some business that might possibly come before this board at any, minute, at any meeting where that is discussed. So for instance, if two of you go have lunch and talk about football and all of that, that's not a sunshine violation. If two of you go and talk about things that may have something to do with this peer review or this NFL, that would be a violation of the sunshine law. So you want to be careful about that. Now, I'll give you uh, the, the same advice I give the other boards that I represent, which is, uh, in these types of situations, perception may well be, uh, per perception is going to be your friend if you, will, if you don't do those sorts of things, if you don't go have lunch and talk about football. Because what happens is people assume you're talking about this peer review. They don't know that you have lives outside of this and, and all that. So my recommendation would be probably don't do that, but if you put the question to me, is it a violation of the Sunshine Law for us to go have football, go have lunch and talk about football, my answer is going to be no, that's not a violation of the Sunshine Law. Um, okay, I can look through that. Oh, it also applies, it's not just uh, oral communications in person, it also applies to phone calls, text messages, um, emails, letters. Any, any of that type of stuff electronically, it also applies to that. So there's no exception for any, <clears throat> any of that. So communication between the three of you needs to be in an open uh, notice of public meeting. And that, that meeting may, uh, as several of ours will be, will, may be electronic and it may be open to the public via the web and all of that, but that's an open public meeting. Um, so who is covered by the Sunshine Law? That's uh, you all are uh, for the purposes of this meeting. Again, it applies to elected appointed boards, special district boards, all of that. Um, advisory boards uh, also, which this is a, it, it's a, it's an interesting creature uh, uh, legally because under 373.042 um, is one of the few places in statute that it really does set out some parameters and all that for peer review. And that, what that statute says is that the governing board, in this case, or DEP, where DEP enacts an NFL, has to give great weight to the peer review report. Now, the, the issue and, and the reason that we uh, think you, you all are likely covered by the Sunshine Law, or at least we think that's likely enough that we're advising you to act that way, is because the legislature's chosen to vest you with some small uh, portion of governmental power. I mean, you, your report has to be given great weight by these uh, deciding bodies, and so we think it's uh, the best practice is, is to um, treat you as a sunshine body. And that, that's where all this comes from. Um, now, the, the communications that are prohibited outside of a public meeting are between the three of them. There is no similar prohibition for you talking to staff, you talking to the public, if you wish. There's no requirement that you talk to the public, but there's no sunshine body. There's no uh, prohibition against any of that. Now, I generally tell my Sunshine Boards, I don't think it's it's just that it's, there's not a prohibition. I think it's a requirement. To do your job, you're going to have to talk to staff. You're going to have to get information. You're going to have to do all that with staff. Absolutely appropriate and, in fact, critical. 
What you have to be careful of, though, is it's very tempting. And when I say tempting, I mean it. it conversations just kind of naturally go that way if you're talking to staff and you say, well, gosh, what did, has board member blank asked about this? Or what did, you know, are the other guys asking about these sorts of things? You can't do any of that because staff can't be a conduit between them. Um, and they, they can't be, I guess, what do they call them? Liaison, I think is what they uh, call them. And that's prohibited. So again, you, it, it's critical that you be able to talk to staff and whoever you need to talk to to do your job, but um, you can't, they, they can't pull you or any of that. Now, there, there is an exception to that a little bit because staff may have to pull you on things like setting up meetings, you know, clearing schedules, all that sort of stuff. That, that's acceptable, but nothing substantive about you know, uh, your job. Um, okay, that's what I got to have. Um, presumption of openness, the, um, the Florida Supreme Court has said they're going to construe the Sunshine Law very liberally in favor of public right of access. Only the legislature can create an exemption uh, to the Sunshine Law. The point of that is if, you, if it's not a statute somebody can give you saying this is not, uh, there's an exception that applies here, that, that exception doesn't exist. Um, Sunshine Law violations. Under Florida law, a public officer unintentionally violates the Sunshine Law is guilty of a non criminal infraction um, and be, is possible to be punished up to a fine of $5,000. Intentional violations are a misdemeanor. Um, it's there. Um, public officers who are intentionally violate the Sunshine Law subject to suspension or removal. The uh, agency, if someone has to bring a lawsuit to enforce the Sunshine Law, that entity is entitled to reason the attorney's costs. Um, attorney's fees and costs can be assessed against the individual member of the board if, they, if the court finds it appropriate. But if the board member seeks advice on whether or not something is a violation of the Sunshine Law and relies on that advice, they can be assessed individually. Um, the individual, the plaintiff in that case would get their uh, fees and costs paid, but it would not go against the end of the report. Um, I think that's it. So that was kind of quick. Uh, are there any questions? Yeah, I, I'm 